Yes, your grace and mercy, Mississippi Mass Choir lead singer Frank Williams. They gonna come after me, you know that <laughs> for copyright. But hey, uh, Buchanan here uh, changed the church name, uh, Christopher Church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> I have little sisters. I heard someone say, um, like I said, right now I'm practicing. I'm trying to get my format down, and uh, uh, I'm gonna try different styles and find out where I need to be, where God wants me to be. And so um, I was trying to do the Bible thing, and uh, God's telling me just shut up. And I'm gonna do what I gotta do. So. Uh, God bless you, God keep you, and here, here it goes. Uh, this is not my sermon. I looked it up. Uh, looked it. <laughs> I looked online, and um, I found this, but I'm coming from where uh, experience, uh, thankfulness, uh, uh, something that I believe in, and I know about God's grace and His mercy. And so, therefore, uh, the sermon will be about God's grace. Uh, so, like I said, it's not man. I borrowed it from my land. And it's just a piece of it. But it's just to let you know that I'm here and I care about you. And, hey, we're going to make it do what it do. God is good all the time. God is good. Uh, we will talk about the grace of God. Grace is unmerited favor. We never deserve grace. For example, we believe that we are saved by grace when we believe in God. We are saved because of what God did, not because of what we did. We receive the Holy Spirit by grace. We don't do anything to earn the Holy Spirit. God has a special grace for each person. You each have a grace that God has given you. He has plans for you and only you. He knew you from eternity and intends good for you. He has good plans for your life to use you as his servant and as a blessing to others. God enables us to fulfill what he has called us to. This is the grace of God. The Apostle Paul's life clearly shows that grace of God. Galatians 1, 13 through 16. For you have heard of my previous ways of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. It was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews and of my own age and was extremely zealous for the tradition of my fathers. But when God, mm, but when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son in me so that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not consult. Hello. <laughs> Ooh, come on with it. I did not 
Paul said, I did not consult any man. <laughs> God called. Yes. God had a plan for Paul's life, even though it seemed unlikely at first, even though Paul sought to destroy the Christian church, God's grace, mm, God's grace and his mercy for real, intervened. Paul deserved punishment. Yes, he did. But God had mercy on him and instead used him to build his church. Yes, he did. He used a man who persecuted, killed Christians. God turned his life around. Mm, I'm going to talk about that another one. That'll be my own. I'm to talk about what Paul really experienced when he was uh, on the road to Damascus and he was knocked off that horse and he was blind, they said, for three days. But I want to talk about that, but that's another subject. But instead, God used him to build his church throughout the Roman world. Jeremiah 1, 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. We are responsible to make the most of God's grace. The circumstances of our life are not fair all the time. But God judges us fairly. He judges us according to the grace he has given us. Our background, our surroundings, the resources we grew up with, our opportunities to learn about him and obey him, etc., Thus forth. <laughs> Luke twelve forty seven through forty eight. That servant who knows his master's will and does not get ready or does not do what his master wants will be beaten with many blows. But the one who does not know and does things deserving punishment will be beaten with few blows. From everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded and from the one who has been entrusted with much much more will be asked and i'm gonna stop right there Whew. thank you jesus for the internet <laughs> Whew. thank you jesus just be it obedient following god's will and uh like i said uh the new church name is crystal tear church of jesus christ jesus Christ. Um, I'm going to learn more about editing and little things like that. I'm not going to bother you with all these things, but I plan to progress and um, I noticed this is a holiday, so a lot of churches will not be having services and uh, some churches will have a that, what they're, they're watch night. I'm not going to attend those. They're watching night. I've been there, done that. I'm not. God bless people that want to go rather than be in the streets and run into a club or hanging out. You know, unless it's some activity you really want to do. But there's churches, St. Stephen Bates is going to be open. I'm quite sure uh, Canaan, Cable. Uh, the reason I named a few churches is not, I've never been to Canaan, but I heard Canaan on the radio. Southeast Church, I mean a church that's big enough to send a few people out to do drive-by prayer. I'm quite sure they're going to have some type of activity. I've never been to the church, but I've seen their work. I don't need to be inside their church. I heard their pastor to see what's going on. I, I, I see what, what a church is doing by seeing its people. That's just me, you know, and I see them doing great things. Sojourn Church uh, stays pretty busy. I've never been there, but I have been invited to attend. Uh, Evangel Church uh I don't believe it. It's not the one located off of Manor's Lane. It's the other church. I don't know where it's located, Reverend Bob Rogers is. I'm quite sure they sent me an invitation to a couple events. Um, oh, so there's a couple of places that's going to have things. So you don't have to worry about being out uh, to bring in the New Year's in an uh, unsafe environment. Uh, quite sure, hopefully, inside the church is safe. Uh, so you can bring in the uh, bring in the New Year's um, in a Christian setting, a holy setting, a godly setting. Uh, like I said, I'm I'm working this out. I'm God's working it out. You know, my body had gotten tired, man. I just got tired. I don't know. First of all, I need to be drinking. Caffeine is not good. <laughs> Now, I'm not knocking everybody. Sometimes you get a little kick from it, but I do too much, and, and it, it drains you. It robs your sleep. So, 
I uh, won't be doing much of that. Um, uh, like I said, God bless you. God keep you. Uh, Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but probably for Christmas if I don't find a church to attend. Because one year I went to a church and uh, they had services on Christmas. I was uh, Thanksgiving. And it was uh, over here off of uh, well, it was Reverend Lyons. He had church service. It was either on Thanksgiving or Christmas. And uh, so uh, I'll find a church probably to go to for Christmas. If not, I will be uh, making a video just to give honor to God and just to be obedient. Well, God bless you. God keep you. And uh, like I said, I, I'm 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 working on it. You know what I'm saying? God's working on me, and I'm working on this and trying to get things together. Uh, learning how I noticed that the videos, the focus on here, that what I use is is uh needs to be edited and all that type of thing. But that'll come along down the road. Um. God bless you. Like I said, I pray that you have a safe uh, Christmas holiday. And I don't pray that you get everything that you want because sometimes the, the things that you want is not good for you. I pray that you get all the things, the gifts, and things that God would have you to have. I'm learning that every day. I don't, I don't want him to give me what I need and what I want because if I got it, I know it'll hurt me. <laughs> so Lord have mercy because I'm not good at uh, asking for, for things on my behalf. So I'm learning that what he gives me is, is best for me because he knows what's best for me. He know, And he knows my heart because sometimes I, I superficially ask for things. You ever do that just superficially? Ooh, I want that. I want a Maserati. But you don't have the money for the Maserati when it breaks down. I keep up the maintenance and, and, and the repairs on the Maserati. But you want a Maserati. Uh, okay, think about that. <laughs> you know. So that's me. Sometimes I want things. And uh, I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave. Uh, I heard this lady, she said something real powerful the other day. And it made me kick back and really look. I had been looking at something. God had, had me looking at my life. But this really made me look. How we put ourselves in, in harm's way. We make our own trouble. And then we like, how did I get here? And then we frustrated and, and we're complaining. And I had to look at that. I, quite often I do that. Perfect example. Eating the wrong things that's not suitable for me, and then wondering why I'm sick, you know. So, yeah, uh, for the new year, and I don't like staying in the new year. I'm making changes now. I'm not waiting for the new year. Things that God wants me to do, I'm doing now. I'm not waiting, oh, next year in uh, 2018 doing this. You know, we don't know what time, you know, how much time we have. We need to take, uh, we take a, we need to take account of the time that we do have right now and do what, what God wants us to do now. And like I said, Talking about grace, I think so often we forget, including myself, we forget that grace is, is time, is a day, is a new day, a new minute, a new moment. That's grace. That's God giving us grace, you know. Um, I'm going to say this because it's on my heart and, and it always troubled me. Uh, I heard about the lady that was in the 9-11 uh, plane crash and uh, what uh horrified me <laughs> big word what horrified me was uh they said that it was a lady on the uh airplane and she had just uh recovered from cancer. I believe it was cancer, if I'm not mistaken. She had just recovered from cancer and she was going to visit somebody, I'm not sure, but you know, and I looked at it and I was like, you know, this is how I talk to God. I was like, God, why would you heal a a cancer then turn around and let her die. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know. And uh, I mean, like he tells me now, <laughs> my ways are not your ways. Your ways are not my way. And uh, I, I don't, I don't question him. You know, but I know one thing about her death is that it helped me, and I'm quite sure it helped a lot of people because too, too often we get caught up in. Okay, if God heal me here, then I'm going to live forever, you know. And that's not true. And we take that grace. That's grace right there. Unmerited favor. We take that for granted. 
is that, oh, wow, he healed me of cancer. Now I can go do what I want to do. I'm not saying that the lady did anything wrong. I'm not, I can't judge nobody. Judge not, ye, at least ye be judged. So now nah, I'm not judging anybody right there. I'm not judging her. But what I'm saying is that what her death had taught me is that, you know, just because you healed or something doesn't mean you can't die. <laughs> You know, don't take God for granted, you know. And it just made me love him that much more to know that I can never be him. <laughs> I can never be God. And I call him a him, I don't know, but just the way he carries himself, <laughs> the way he takes action, <laughs> I, I'm quite sure it's a man, you know. Uh, in one of my earlier videos, I explained why I believe that with Val and Dad, I know it's a man. You know, like I said, what man would tell, what woman would take and put out a woman to have children. It's as hard as that is to give birth. It's one of the hardest things in the world to pass a six pound, seven pound, eight pound, twelve pound, fifteen pound baby out of your body. Yeah, come on with it. Now, guy's a man. <laughs> He's a man. So like I said, uh just think about what I said, you know, and uh use it. Think about it. It's a good time. It's a perfect time to think about grace. Don't worry about if somebody's giving you something. Uh, if someone's taking something from you, just be thankful that you are here, you are alive. You know, I passed uh, a street and I seen some homeless people sleeping under the bridges again, up under the highway. And uh, I don't look down on nobody. I just look at it. You know what I'm saying? It could be me. We never know. I, and that's why I said, that's how good God is. That's how awesome God is. The lady was healed of cancer or healed of an ailment. And then turned around, she's in a plane and she dies. The fact is that her death still is a blessing to others because it lets people know that we need to take advantage of each day. We need to, to be aware of God blessing us. Be aware of God's grace. And his mercy, but be aware of his grace and merited favor. We need to always remember that. That it's not <laughs> it's not something that we can pay for. I don't care how much money you got in this world. Billionaire, Gates, all of them. Oprah, all of them. All of that money that they have. Tell me, how many of them can take and buy their way to heaven? How many of them can take and buy them a new life? I, I, I've yet to see that. I don't know. How much money can you take? I've heard of people being rich. And then they take it up. When they die, they want their head frozen. So later in life, when they figure that they're going to, a uh, uh, scientist or someone's going to invent some type of uh, uh, cure for whatever ailed them and they're going to bring them back. I heard of that. But I've yet to hear about somebody taking billions of dollars and paying to live longer and to, uh, to pay to take and uh, go to heaven. I haven't seen that. And I, you know. I don't want to see it. You know, I don't want to have enough money to pay to buy something. Because then is it a trip that you really want? You know, I mean, it, 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 if you pay, if you could pay to go to heaven, would it be the heaven that God has for you? Because God always got a plan. I'm not saying he's trickery, but if you pay, if you could pay your way to heaven, you better believe he got a he got an alternate plan for you. It's not what you think. If you pay in your way to heaven, you think you're gonna walk? I don't believe all that street of the gold stuff. I believe that. His grace and his mercy is sufficient that he's going to take away the pain. And what we thought was uh, was troubling us would trouble us no more. Uh, I don't, I can't see walking no streets of gold when you don't have it. It's just a song. You know, walk streets of gold. I don't believe that. You're going to walk streets of gold when you, your legs, you, you, you're in spirit form. But I believe that just to be in his presence. And to see him on the throne, I, I believe that will be enough for me. Uh, God bless you and keep you. Like I said, just just think about that grace, unmerited favor. And God bless you and keep you.